Hi friends, welcome back. Today we are going to jump right in to a haul. I came across a lot of belts, they're amazing. And so we'll go over that and the brands and we're gonna jump right into how I photograph the belts. And then I'm going to show you the app that I use. I just do a simple edit and the photos come out amazing. It's a really simple process. Anybody can do it, it's not hard at all. I just wanted to show you some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way of what makes a belt pop how to correctly position it and what works and what doesn't work. So hopefully this will be beneficial to you. Okay, so these are the belts. This is from Novica. It's made in Indonesia, it looks like. And it's just a really fun beaded belt. Um, it has all of these really intricate beadings. The buckle on it is like wood or something. It's really, really neat. And I think it like just closes by attaching like this or something. So it's pretty neat. And then I have this Western belt. It is made by RM Withers and it has double straps. Um, and so you can adjust it and everything. Um, so it's just a really nice brown belt, which brown goes with everything. So I thought that was a good find. This is by Brighton. And um, the sizing on Brighton, I feel like is a little bit odd like because it's they're kind of it's kind of a vintage this one looks like it's vintage because it says it's a medium large it looks kind of small to me so I will just notate I will take a measurement of it and just notate the measurement because I kind of feel like it leans more towards like an extra small or a small waist it has like calf's hair on it and it has like this really intricate detail it has like leopard and then this and then this one right here um it doesn't have a brand or anything on it um, but it's a pretty heavy, a pretty heavy weight, like golden toned belt. I think there is a brand right here. Let's see. It says Alexis. I believe it says Alexis. It's a really, really cute belt. This belt right here, this is like a really, really cute Western type boho belt. And I really like the buckle on this. It has like a lot of different stones and jewels and things. And um, it has like a, it's kind of like a gray black color. It has like pinks and pink and blue and it's like studded. So a lot of intricate de detail. So when I found this, I was super excited. You can kind of tell whenever one, the more quality ones just based on the, on the touch. And this is a really nice leather. And like it has that vintage cracking, which is really desirable. It's like a trendier um, type western look so it's like a more of a, like a rugged type thing i will have to say that whenever you're listing something that has like this cr this cracking in it it's it's done purposefully and intentionally but i have had people have buyers like claim item not as described because they feel like it's worn i always disclose that in the description and i always when i'm taking photos i always take really close-up photos to show it and say that it does have that vintage cracked look i try to always just be completely transparent with with my buyers so that they know what they're getting um but i have had people just not read the description and then they will just open item not as described this is a another le leather belt i picked up a lot of leather belts this one is a small genuine leather it's a liz claiborne this is like a vintage liz claiborne i don't always pick up liz claiborne but i really liked uh, that it's genuine leather and because of the detail i thought was really really cute color really matters on belts i also look at size this one looks small i don't always do as well with small belts but if it's cute enough i will just tend to go for it especially if it's like really really cute this one does have some scuffing on it if you as you can see but um i always will just disclose that if it has like a little bit of scuffing if you ever see like those old vintage tees like they get as they age they get softer and sometimes they'll get like little holes in it but it really makes it more desirable that's like how it is with western belts but i always always point out that because some people it would bother them or uh they don't like that type of style so i always always mention it always be 100 percent transparent and take lots of photos that's just what i do and then this one right here is a kate spade it is genuine leather it's a medium large this has elastic at the back so it like has like a magnetic type lock at the back and then it's really really cute it's this really buttery soft leather it does have a flaw so right here it's supposed to be tacked down right there and it's not it is on this side 
but on this side it's not tacked down so when i list it i'll just mention that even though it's not like damaged on this side it looks like it might have have, have a little tear because it got like taken off and this belt right here this is another western belt i came across a lot of western i mean we're in a southern state so i do tend to come across a lot of western wear and western wear really does really really well for me um but this is a chico's uh, belt it is genuine leather again i never pick up belts that are not leather if it's not leather i typically do not pick it up unless it's something like really spectacular about it or if it is a really amazing brand or if i really just like the style so 99 percent of the time i always only pick up leather belts i don't do faux leather i don't even like doing faux leather jackets but um i will do it on a case-by-case -case basis um because i do think that faux leather does not tend to do well it can crack so i think that and, and it's just it's just not as popular people don't tend to buy faux leather as much and it tends to sell like at a lower price so um it's just not worth it to me to buy those i know faux leather probably does really really well for some people and maybe it's just me but i just have i just haven't had success with that so typically i will just stay away from it and just only stick with real genuine leather and then this one right here this is brand new with tags it is from bcbg max's area i don't know if i'm saying that right i know that you know some people say it different ways I, i've that's just what i've always called it but it's a toggle hip belt it retailed for 118 dollars, and it has like this really 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 pretty reptilian like snakeskin type look this is not genuine leather so this is one of the rare cases where i did not pick up one that was genuine leather this one i picked up purely because it was new with tags and i do have had i do have success with this brand i think what makes it unique is how it buckles how it has like the the little hooks here and then it has this little toggle thing and you can put it through this or this one or actually both i think you're supposed to put it through both and then it it goes in here so this belt right here is Coldwater creek and um it is the caravan belt and it retailed for 49.95 and it's just a really really cute it has a basic kind of buckle um but it's embossed with these elephants which i thought was really really cute and this is a size large and it is also genuine leather so i thought that was just a really cute belt and it goes i i think that brown belts and um black belts sell really really well for me because they really go with any outfit so i have a lot of people that just pick it up or they all like red colors of belts that can go with other things but mainly it's black and brown for me that i have seen success with the belt buckle on this one says paris asimco i love 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 this it's like studded with um this paisley gold toned metal it's embossed the the, the leather part and then on the on the other side it is like a mesh like a wire mesh detail and the mesh detail is kind of like a green color so when i'm listing this i will always use really descriptive words like i'll tell exactly what i see it's kind of like a metal chain like mesh type thing it looks metal more metal to me it has a uh, gold toned and uh it's a paisley studded with this it's kind of like a faux crocodile print like i said i always do measurements on belts so i will show the measurements of this so that it, that they can be sure that it will actually fit them and then next we have this um both of these actually are by the same brand um they were probably from the same person that just dropped them off and this is judith label a lot of this i have not heard of these brands but i'm never scared to try something so if i feel something and i'll just say that feels like a very high quality leather like this does this is from neiman marcus and so that is what caught my attention because neiman marcus is a very very high-end brand anytime you see neiman, neiman marcus things at neiman marcus cost a lot of money even now doing it for as long as i have i will continuously come across brands that i still do not know i always say if you don't know if it will do well you should definitely look it up don't just buy something just to buy it 
until you have had a lot of experience doing it. But um, so I always tend to like stop and check if I don't know. But this one I didn't because I do know that Neiman Marcus is a very um, high end brand. It kind of feels like a snake skin again. It's kind of textured feeling and it has a really, really pretty buckle. I'm pretty sure these are vintage because it, it has a vintage look. It looks like it can be adjusted somehow. I don't know for sure. I haven't played around with it yet. And then this one right here, same brand. It's definitely adjustable because you can see that it slides and so it can get bigger and smaller. So when I measure this, I'll measure it at the shortest length and also at the longest length. And so, yeah, again, this one is, it looks vintage to me. It may not be, but maybe it's just an intentional vintage look, but I will check everything before I list it and see comps and things and see uh, exactly what it is. If I can, if not, I will just list exactly how I see, say, I'm not sure if this is vintage. Cause if you, the problem is, is if you don't know if it's vintage, you should never say that it is unless you are a hundred percent sure. But if I don't know, then I'll say, I believe it is vintage. Otherwise you just be as descriptive as you can, because I find that the more descriptive you are, the less likely you will get a return. You're not supposed to get returns on Poshmark, but it doesn't matter because they will put item not as described and it will get returned anyway. So definitely, definitely, uh, I always try to be super descriptive on things. And then this one right here, this is the last belt. It has like really, really cute, intricate detail. It's Mickey Mouse. I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to learn how to use the camera. It has like a double belt buckle. It looks like a Mickey and then Donald Duck right there. And even the tip of it, it has Pluto, it looks like. On the other side, it has, it says it's Disney. So um, this, I believe, is a Brighton Disney brand, a Disney collab piece. So yeah, it says right here by Brighton. I will look this up because I think this might be um, a rare piece and on rare pieces like this, usually they don't make a lot. And if it is, if it is more rare, then it usually will go for higher. And I don't always pick up Brighton, but I do pick it up if it's like something special about it like this. Okay, so now I'm standing right in front of my light box that I use. This is what I use to take pictures of all small things whether it be a purse, a belt, shoes, whatever it be, um, that's what I, this is just what I use. What's awesome about it is it has a light installed already in it. So you don't have to have any extra lighting. You can see the lighting is really good in here. It shows like all the coloring and stuff really, really well. And it folds up. The, the problem is, is that the last time that I used this, I folded it up incorrectly. It has Velcro right here and you're supposed to take it and just Velcro it right here and right here and then you fold it up it just collapses and um but it's still very very sturdy but what i what i did was is i forgot to put it in the velcro so it's kind of wrinkly but it doesn't bother me because i will uh do a simple edit on my photos after i'm done and it will get rid of the wrinkles you won't be able to notice them i will probably leave it out and for a couple of days because i had it um folded up and it, the wrinkles so the wrinkles won't, won't be in it for next time on this one this one's kind of odd so I'll take a photo like this. I always do close-ups of the brand. So I will take a picture like that. And then I will probably show one like this. And then probably I'll do like one like this as well. And then I will probably roll it up and uh, like nice and neatly. It's kind of hard to do on camera, but I will roll it up nice and neatly and kind of try to um, prop it up back here. And then I'll take a photo like that. I did find out how to latch this. Um, and so I will definitely be taking a photo like this and this will probably be my profile photo. Um, I'll have to see how it turns out and edit. If not, I will use a very, very close up one to show the really pretty detailing like that. But it'll probably be this one or this one as my profile photo. Okay, so on this one, it does have more than just a scuff on this part. It looks like an actual scratch. So when I photograph it, I'm just going to point at it with my finger and I will also just put it in the description. And then I also like to take pictures of detail on belts like this uh, long horn right there. And then I always take pictures of the brand like I told you. I like to roll belts up tightly. Some people just like to sh like uh, do it really, really wide and flat. But I think whenever you roll it up very, very quietly, uh, tightly, then you can get a closer up 
like this of all the detail and then I'll turn it sometimes like if the, on the belts that have more detail on the back and then it will show a lot more and I just think it really stands out on the profile photo than if you just had it like like this you know what I mean it would depend on the belt like I it varies by what I what it looks like but I can kind of just tell what the picture is going to look at and what, what's going to stand out to buyers when they're scrolling because you are in competition with a lot of other people um that are listing same like type of not the maybe not the exact same belt but they're also listing like lots of leather belts like this so what is awesome about that is is that if you can make your photos stand out then people will want to click it and then they'll want to purchase it so that is key that's why pictures are so important so um hopefully these tips are helping you And I know I told told y'all that I always take a picture of it rolled up. I like to do that. I mean, not always, but I like to. I always, always, always show a picture of it buckled like it's supposed to be buckled. Because, for example, if I only rolled this, they the buyer would never know because of how this belt is. It has different patchwork, like not like a patchwork, but it's like half hair. Um, but it is different prints all the way around. And only the front has that uh, that leather so if I was to roll it up, it, the buckle, it would make it seem like the entire thing was like that. So I always show it buckled so that way the buyer is satisfied and they know that the front of this is leather and the back of it is what has the, the back and the sides is what has the calf hair. So now we're gonna jump right into the photo editing. This is the app that I use. It's called PicTap Go. So I just am going to select one of these photos. I'll pick this one and we're gonna click edit. And then after that, you're gonna click filters. And I tend to just use lights on. Um, so you can adjust this slider as much, you can make it as bright as you want or as dim as you want. Um, I like to really whenever I'm listing and I have when I'm doing editing photos I like to have the belt right next to me and what I will do is I will see what it looks like in natural lighting so make sure that you have it right next to you when you do this because if you make the belt look too light or you make it look too dark um, it's going to be a problem when the buyer receives it so they're going to expect it to look exactly like how you're showing it so I think you, you still you want to brighten it enough that the background really pops but it the belt still looks like it really does so i'm gonna put it like right about there and then you just check mark it and um then you then you click go and you will uh you can actually save a recipe you can do a whole batch i'm just gonna save this one photo so let's pick a different one so as you can see the photos really turned out really good so the light box really does help it so it doesn't really need a whole lot more but I, I, like I said, I always just use the lights on. That is way too bright. It washes it out a lot. So, we, and you don't want it to look like old, but you don't want it to look better than what it does either. If I put it all the way up, it kind of looks better, like almost better. So you, I, I think it really looks right about there. That's, that's like the perfect um, picture. So I'm gonna click check mark on that and then we will save that. And then what we'll do this one again, we'll, we will go through the process. Um, I wanna show you on this one how, see it doesn't look that red, but it looks like, I would say right about there is where I'm gonna put it. I'll show you before, this is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like after. So it really does, as you can see on this one, you can see that the background has wrinkles still, but it really helps whenever you brighten it up a little bit. It's just like a one click step. So I will do this one. This is just the back of it and I will go ahead and do the filter on this one just to show you another one. They do have other options, like this is like, you can warm it up if it's like more cool toned and you want it to be, if it really is actually more warm tone, you can warm it up. And this has like all different kinds, like I'm scrolling to show you literally, it's insane how many they have. I tend to gravitate just towards the lights on 
and I think there's another one that I tend to use. There's like two or three that I use, but more, most frequently, and for this, what we're listing, I'm just gonna use the lights on. So this is, uh, this is probably more of where it's at, but w for some reason, whenever you go too bright, it starts to show things that aren't really there. And sometimes that happens, um, like in real life, if you see in the back of that bill, it kind of looks like it starts to show a flaw that's not even there. Like it makes it look more like old. So this is more where it is. So you just check mark that and then you are good to go. So that is my listing process for uh, belts. And next time I will do a video on how I list shoes and boots and things like that. I'll be showing hauls that I do for clothing, fashion. Um, this channel is gonna be awesome. So if you would click like on this if video, if it helped you and you want to um, know about uh, more things that are coming up, please subscribe um, and hit that notification bell. So that way you are notified whenever I post a new video. And uh, definitely stay tuned because I have a lot of great things planned. I'm going to be going over more uh, the pro listing process of how I actually list on Poshmark and eBay. A lot of great things planned and I'm just really excited for y'all to come along on my journey. And thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. I'm completely new to this. So I really have no clue what I'm doing, but I wanted to share what I ha what any tips that I have. So hopefully it'll, it has been beneficial to you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.